Hey, welcome everybody. We're back here Thursday night outdoor showcase on Mike Delvisco, and uh, it is getting really close to the end of the year. Only a couple more days to Christmas now, and then uh, New Year's, and then show season will start shortly after that, and it's going to be crazy. Um, East Tennessee Fishing Show coming up here the end of the month, 25th through the 28th of January, and then the Alabama Fishing Expo, March 8th, 9th, and 10th over there in Gadsden. Looking forward to that, too. And one of my favorite guys to talk to, we got him here. We got him first on the show. Uh, Dano, Dano Sullivan, and then Michael Wildman over there on the other side. Uh, the guy that makes sure everything works right and looks good. Uh, always doing a good job. Dano, what's going on? I'm not the guy that makes it look good. I'm the guy that makes it look goofy. <laughs> Michael's the one that makes sure that it all works. Yeah. Um, that's just... <laughs> That's I'm not going to argue. <laughs> I make him look good. And uh, there's you know, it's nothing just, that makes me look good. It's just the way it is. But uh, now we're great, man. Uh, headed into Christmas and uh, uh, the much needed shutdown time is a shop for for a couple of weeks yep. for everybody to go enjoy Christmas and catch up on uh, the like three and a half acres of uh, bass boats that are that are in for service and other other boats. So. Um, it's not quite that much, I don't think, but no, probably we, we got, we got a, few. a lot of boats out here. So, uh, guys are, are turning wrenches here, but also enjoying time with the family. And, you know, before we know it, we're going to be in, we're going to be in the, the season. Yeah. Yes. We'll be here before we know it. Um, True. So, so Dana, when we were talking, you know, last time we did an episode here on the outdoor showcase, you were just getting. Um, they were just getting the tackle shop going. They were working on inventory and stuff. And I know that was right before the Alabama show. Uh, how are things going there now in the shop? Um, the loft had another record year. Um, and as far as sales go, uh, it definitely tapered off a little bit towards the end of the year. Um, you know, you do have factors with things going on in the world, but you also have hunting season that starts up and, you know, it's funny you, there's a lot of news out there. Uh, but one thing that tends to be one of the last things that people let go of is something recreational and fishermen are going to go fishing. Yep. Anglers will angle. And, um, the only thing that stops them is when something else comes into play. That's, that's got a similar priority and, and hunting season is one that always kind of creates a slowdown, uh, in the fishing space. Yep. Um, that in summer, the heat of summer, sometimes you'll see that. And, and we do have a little thing called college football, especially here yeah, in Alabama. Here in South, it's, yeah. it's, it's got a minor impact on uh, yeah. how people spend their weekends this time yeah. of year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to go to my first Sooner game this year with Bradley Hallman, you know, the former elite pro. Yeah. Uh, who's a season ticket holder. His wife's an alum and uh, she's an attorney there in Norman. And I'll be honest with you, I'm thinking about in 2025 buying season tickets myself to that <laughs> and leaving on a Thursday, heading that way and do the camping thing over there with them and the tailgating and then come back on Monday. Um, it does have an impact, uh, but largely we saw a, a record year still here at the loft. Colin and Jamie upstairs, they're constantly shipping um, upstairs. So, um, but we're looking forward to getting back in front of people again, come January. I mean, we've got the Bass University that's going to be here in January or right. like right at, right at the beginning of February. And, uh, that kind of kicks off show season for us. So, um, all that stuff kind of gets ramped back up. Tournaments start getting kicked in, into gear. All of a sudden rods and reels are bought in line and people are, you know, st hunting season's over makes a big difference. Right. Um, yeah. And there, there are plenty of hardcore anglers that will go fishing with ice on their deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's also a ton of guys that own boats, kayaks, and uh, that they're not going to go play that game. Um, so uh, you know, they go rig tackle or go hunting or watch some football. So yeah, I mean, this time of year is, or just sleep. Yeah, hey, that's a that's oof. Wonder what that's like. Sit on the couch and watch Christmas movies on Hallmark with your wife. Yeah, I haven't done much of that. Oh, how, however, Brandy does have some some plans in store for a, a 
Christmas movie marathon coming up here, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, I think. So well we've 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 watched Elf and we've watched Christmas Vacation. We've watched those. But yeah. and I gotta say it's 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 great American family that she's gone to now. So those movies are which I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't mind. It's mindless, there's no drama, there's no stress other yeah. than figuring out which factory was going to get shut down until this guy came in and fell in love with the so-and-so and then it all gets solved in the end. Right. That's how life works, right? It's, 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 the same, it's the same plot, just different actors. Every movie. Right. Is, is there a Christmas fishing movie? Um, I don't know, but you know what I did watch the other day? I watched Bait Shop from, uh, I guess it was 2008 or nine, something like that with, with um, Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah, Billy Ray Cyrus in, in uh, Ingvall. Um, that was, uh, yeah, that brought back some memories. I hadn't watched that for a while. Well, the, here's the, I've always had a funny feeling about that movie. It's, it, it's fine. I, the movie was fine. It was, but I'm sorry. And I'm going to say this to people. I've been around this game a long time. I'm like 30 years in this now. Fishermen take themselves way too seriously. <laughs> we do. Yeah. I, I'll give you, I'll give you a story. And you know, I might get shot if I show this, um, I'm going to have to cover something, but this 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 will illustrate it. If if the NASCAR community would have taken the same a, approach that bass fishermen took to uh, Talladega Nights, come on, that's one of the greatest movies in the history of the world, and they can poke fun at themselves right. as far as c comedy stuff goes. But fishermen with the, with with uh, bait shop, they just were so offended that it didn't show what we really are all about. Who cares? Yeah. It's called visibility. I'm going to show this picture, though, here I, just one second. I, I feel like I've taken this down a rabbit hole. No, that's good. So, so I have to um, I have to cover part of this because it's, <laughs> it's, it's his number. But here, let me see if I can do this effectively. Okay, here we go. So see this picture right here? <laughs> so that is... And, and if... If he was here and this was water, Tommy would slap this in my hand. But yeah. that is a picture that uh, Gary Dolahan of Dolahan PR and his guys came up with in 2009 when they had the Bassmaster AOI here in Alabama. Yeah. He was leading. Biffle was leading after the second day and had moved into the lead and all this stuff. Well, Ike had spent all his time down on the uh, – down maybe it was even later in the tournament but anyway biffle had taken over the lead in the in the tournament in the aoi at that point and but he was fishing way up river and ike and ellie was fishing in front of the piers down in montgomery and so they had mike on camera who was catching you know that right and and Dolahan goes, what do we have to do to get Tommy some airtime? I guess he's got to wear a flat bill and a big gold chain. So the, the graphics guy and Tommy and, and Gary got together and they made this, they made this character they called the Biff. <laughs> <laughs> and they showed it to Tommy and he got mad. And they're like, I like Tommy, dude, my gosh, if we were to make a t-shirt with that on it, holy crap, yeah. dude, you'd sell thousands of them. Nope, yeah. nope, nope. That will never be seen. And Gary told me, never let Tommy see that you got that on your phone, especially if you're on the lake. He'll knock it in your hand. So especially don't put it on the internet on a show. Never, 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 yeah. no, never, never. Well, um, but too late. so bait <laughs> shop, bait <laughs> shop. Yeah. Our sport got visibility. They made fun of us. Great. They yeah. Will Ferrell and those guys made fun of everybody. I mean, th there's hot shots part do. Michael is a, a and that and those movies. Michael's a fighter pilot. You know, he's goose. That's what he did in the military. Yeah. Did the naval community go? I often wonder, could you roast a hot dog behind an F-18? <laughs> I don't know that there would be much left. I'm just saying. <laughs> but, uh, yes. We just got it. We got to have fun. Bait yeah. shop was great. Visibility, yeah. impressions, that's what it's about. And it was right there at, uh, at, at Big Toho. Which uh, you know, Brandy and I were watching it. And Brandy had never seen the movie, and uh, I said, "You remember being there, don't you?" And she's looking at the place, and she goes, "I was." I go, "Yeah, last year we had our Texas Roadhouse Conference was down in Orlando, and, and we all went fishing out of Big Toho." So um, she said, "Oh yeah," and I remember that place. So yeah, and that was the Detweilers that owned that thing. Yeah, yeah. Now they're in Gunnersville. That's right. Cody's boat came through here. Yeah. 
So. They're all in. They're all in. Uh, they're all in Gunnersville now, and he, they sold the marina. What a great place that was. That yeah. that that tackle shop and all that stuff was an amazing yeah. place. Yeah. So. We'll move wow. But, Boy, um, can I run rabbit holes? Yeah. So I've been uh, I've been fishing a little bit just to let you know. I'm I'm kind of getting ready for a rematch um, down there at, at Neely if we uh, if you so choose to Ooh. pick me up on that. A Bucks um, Island Live. I see yeah. it. Yeah. Bucks Island Live. Um, uh, as long as it's really cold and really windy, that's uh, that's the way we like to do it. So, no, absolutely, yeah. Let's uh, down. Let, let's let's make it happen. Yeah, I've uh, got a and I've got a tournament that like the week before. I think I get done on the first or the second, maybe the second, um, down there at Gunnersville. So, um, I'll I'll be in I'll be in prime shape by the time I see you the next week. Yeah, and no. I won't be in prime shape for anything but sitting no. on the couch watching Hallmark <laughs> movies. I wouldn't be opposed to doing it in, say, South Florida. Um, <laughs> we'll promote so, the Alabama fishing show we'll, from Toho. Hey, it's yeah. warm enough. We'll catch fish. We'll do it with uh, shirts on. And We're in Canoe bundles. Creek flipping 12s. <laughs> <laughs> The miracle of editing. How about that? Yeah, it's right. We'll, we'll do a, a green screen. Um, there we go. Kusa landing in the background the whole time. Sure. <laughs> I'll set that up. Uh, we are having a kids fishing derby. I don't know if you saw uh, Sheila. Um, <laughs> Sheila talked to me, I don't know, about two months ago. And she says, hey, look, what do you think about doing a fishing derby? Um, I'm wondering, all right, let's do it. So so we figured out we're going to do it at, at Saturday morning of the show. Right Jeez. down there on the river walk at Kusa, and we've already got a bunch of kids signed up, which would be kind of cool. So doesn't surprise me. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you are you working with uh, Kusa Riverkeeper on that at all? I know they, um, they've had a program going on and around the area. Yeah, I've not contacted them yet. Um, I know they were at the show last year, and they did their their actual program. So. I need to, to get with them and, and see if they want to be involved too. But well, just yeah. let us know if, if we can help. So I'm a, I'm a good friend of, of the, uh, the executive director. I know they, they did a round of clinics, um, gave away some rods and reels and all that kind of stuff uh, to all their, pretty much all their tributaries along the Coosa uh, that they work on. And so we actually went over there, took a pontoon boat. It was a lot of fun. Took a bunch of kids and their parents out on the water. You know, half of them had never been, on a boat before and uh you know gave them gave them that that experience so it was uh it was a lot of fun and you know they 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 really got got into the biology of it they're they're not necessarily going to help you learn how to catch more fish right um but they get into the biology and the ecosystem of the river and all that kind of stuff but. yeah very cool so yeah the show's shaping up to be good i think it's sold out as a matter of fact i don't know if there's any space left for anybody but um, I know Bucks Island. You guys will be there again. We get we got our order in. Yeah, we got our order in. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I need to, I need to call Miss Sheila and see what we can do. I, I I have an idea for some space that uh, I'd like to before we get into layout too much. Same area that we were in, but just kind of maybe take that and across the hallway and against the wall. Yeah, might be kind of nice. Cool. Um, what else is going on out there? You been fishing at all? Uh, honestly, last time I got on the water uh, was for the Coosa River or Coosa River uh, Team Trail Championship, but that was November. Right. Um, I've had an awful lot of writing to do. Uh, we've had to take the camper in for some work, and so there's been a lot going on. Uh, there's a lot going on around here, despite you know that we're still selling bass boats. I mean, there's yeah. there's still customers coming in, and and our rigging department is still busy. And, and then around this time, the, 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 the pro anglers really start getting stuff going on. So we spend an awful lot of time with helping them get ready for sales pitches and things like that, my wife and I. Um, but around here at Bucks Island, you know, they're, they're, the boats are coming in. I mean, we've had Canterbury's boats been in here and, and had some stuff done to it. So is Wes Logan's. Uh, Joey Nania's boat just showed up. We've got... Uh, Matt Heron's boat's been through here already. So the stuff is going on, getting ready, but we still have customers too yeah. that, are, that are coming through. We've we've sold some Avids and we've sold some Skeeters and some Falcons and Bass Cat stuff's going out the door. And so when it comes time to just being able to get out and go, I seem to be able to fish when I have a tournament is really what yeah. 
there's not a lot of time for just fun fishing and it stinks because I'd love to be able to say, and I probably need to find a way to be able to do that at least once a week, get out there and go do something. But well, I'm just getting myself got, distracted. I've got two. I know I have definitely two events at Neely next year. I may have three. I'm not sure. I've got, I've either got three at Martin and two at Neely or three at Neely and two at Martin. I forget what, what it is. I'm switching things up um, a little bit this year and I'm going to fish that ABA top 150 deal. Okay. Um, and the ABA pro deal because no co-anglers in each one. So, nice. and they go to fun lakes to, to fish. I, you know, I really miss fishing Lake Martin and I miss fishing Neely and nobody else really goes there, you know, unless you try to jump in a BFL or something like that. But um, the nice thing about that ABA is they let you pick and choose what tournaments you want to fish and then add it, add everything together for a national ranking. So I can, okay. you know, after 45 years of doing this, I just want to go fish some places I like to go fish. Yeah. And and not, you know, I, I miss going to Neely. I miss going to Martin and some of the other places that we're going to go to. So so I will be down that, that way quite a bit. Well, I definitely, uh, I'll, I'll make the sales pitch. Um, <clears throat> if uh, for, for guys you're fishing with, uh, we get a lot of folks here at Bucks uh, that are coming in for these tournaments. Um, you know, while we talk about, you know, we, we've got a, typically a pretty long waiting list to get boat serviced. They do a really good job here. If you, you're here fishing a tournament, um, you know, the, the, the maintenance guys, if you got a problem, you know, you've invested a lot of money to get ready and get down here. Um, they, uh, they do a really good job of going, okay, we'll, we'll hold off on doing other maintenance, and get this guy back out on the water so we can fish a tournament. So we, we get that. I mean, I'd, I'd say almost every, uh, every tournament, especially ones that attract, you know, folks from outside the area. Um, yeah. So don't make sure folks know, don't hesitate to give us, give us a shout. Um, so, yeah, we'll do everything we can to get you I mean, back on the water. Even, even if we're not mm -hmm. open, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do the best, best we can. So awesome. And easy to find bucksisland.com on, on yep. the web. Yep. Um, same thing on Facebook. You guys have got Instagram and all that stuff too. Yep. And, and messaging text us. Mm -hmm. If nobody's answering the phone, shoot a text. Um, you can text. All, it's all the same same system. Just yeah. go to the website and you can text us because we all see the text when they they come in and you know. So even if we're closed, and that that's happened, you know, that's happened plenty of times too. So, yep. but that that's definitely sorry hardcore sales pitch, but uh, <laughs> you know it, it is what it is, and you know it's unfortunate that that that's just not a given in this industry is you, you go some places where, you know, Oh, well, I didn't buy the boat from them. So I'm not going to take my boat. To, I mean, like that's, yeah, that's crazy. So yep. um, we have plenty of people from Minnesota that show up here to fish a tournament and end up calling back and going, Hey, I really enjoyed working with y'all and can I buy a boat? Yep. Um, and all right, we'll take care of you. So that's what it's all about. And, uh, and Dano, you do a, a Thursday fishing report. Is that right too? That you still doing we, that? We try to tape it on Thursday. Um, we want it to be as close to the time as we can. So the information's accurate. Sometimes with holidays and travel schedules, we kind of have to move it around a little bit. But we try to record on Thursday so that the radio stations have it for their Saturday morning um, broadcasts. And we're on nine radio stations plus our social medias that we do the fishing reports for. Which I will say, now that we've been doing that for, what, two, three, three three solid years of data. If you're, you know, this time of year, especially you're doing research, if you got tournaments in this area, um, cause you know, there's some gems dropped in there and that's a, <clears throat> that's a pretty good database from, uh, what do we cover? Gunnersville, <clears throat> Weiss, 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 Neely, Neely Henry, Logan Martin, Lay Lake, Lay. And in the last year we added Lake Martin and Jordan Lake too. So yeah. if um, you're, if you're coming down here and, uh, you know, Obviously, we're trying channel. to do it in real time, but you go to our YouTube channel. I've even got it in a playlist, and you can just scroll back, you know, find the time frame that you're going to be here. Because um, as everybody knows, you know, things don't change that much, and there's some really good info there. Um, and we've got, I mean, some of the best anglers around here that are, they're giving, uh, they're not giving away all their secrets, I don't think. But No, uh, they, they, hold, they hold a little bit of juice for themselves, I'm sure. Yeah. But, but we do... Uh, we consult with and bring in, like he said, you know, Lee Pitts for Weiss and Neely Henry. Uh, Tom Ott does Gunnersville for us. Um, 
And we've got Josh Heron, Matt's son that fishes Logan Martin and Lay Lake a ton. And then our, our guy, Gentry Gordy, who fishes the Alabama Bass Trail down in the South Division. He does Lake Martin and Jordan Lake for us. So what we do is pose them questions, let them give the answers, chat about it a little bit. Um, it's a great resource. Uh, we get a lot of good feedback from it. Um, I'm always surprised walking around town uh, when I'm working around town or going shopping with my wife, the amount of people that stop and say, hey, I've seen you on your show. And I'm like, my show? <laughs> oh, okay. I know that one. Uh, and it's funny. <laughs> how it, you know, um, yeah. It, it just kind of funny just because you do something that you're trying to do as a service and people stop you and talk about it. You've seen it your whole career, Mike. It's yeah. I've seen you on TV. Really? Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's always, it's always strange, you know, and when people kind of look at you just walk around and maybe not even with a no logos or something. And some guy gives you a double look and you give them, you give them that look back. What are you looking at? So aren't you Mike Davis? Go, yeah. <laughs> aren't you Dano? See, the thing with him is he's walking around with a last name like Del Visco and he's over there going, yeah, I see. Uh. <laughs> so someone walks up on him and he's thinking I'm going to cut him. Oh, wait, the guy's just like, that's Biffle. that's Biffle. I got to cut you. <laughs> Tough guy, huh? Yeah, Biffle. I got you. Mike doesn't wear shorts like that. So, so that um, before we take a commercial break, that little, that little place that you and I fished last year in Neely, when you first go in, mm -hmm. Um, I had spent, this is during one of the PAA events and, um, and I had them in there pretty good. And, and it was a morning, morning thing. And I had been in there in the morning and no one was in there at all. I caught three or four in there and then got out. And the end of the day, I go back in there and who's sitting right, like right where I want to fish Biffle. And, uh, and he goes, don't come in here. Don't let's go and cut you. So I goes, I just kept on going. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh that's a fun little spot yep so but uh we are up against a commercial break here um any plugs before we uh will we say goodbye nope i think we've plugged it all i think we've plugged it all um we will uh i'll, I'll broadcast again you know as we get close to the alabama show um kind of when we're going to do our live thing we'll, we'll get that set up and, and i'll make sure i promote that so people can actually see me maybe catch a fish with, you know, with you in the boat. So um, <laughs> in, instead of the other way around, <laughs> well, I'll let you have the bow. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, uh, commercial break coming up here. We will be right back with more outdoor showcase. I'm Mike Dovisco. That's Dan O. And it's Michael on the other side. Catch the best in outdoor products every month on the Outdoor Showcase. Hosts Sheila Bunch and Mike Del Visco bring you new, unique, and awesome products for the outdoors. Featuring guests and segments, whether you fish, boat, camp, or just love the outdoors, there's always something for everyone. We are live the last Thursday of every month, available on Fire TV and Roku. For more info or to have your products showcased, visit theoutdoorshowcase.com. We'll see you in the great outdoors. Hey, welcome everybody! The Outdoor Showcase. We are back from our commercial break, and uh, you know, every single week now for the last maybe a month and a half, we've had at least one guest on here that's doing some seminars at the East Tennessee Fishing Show, and uh, well, we got another one here right now, and um, this is going to be really cool because this is going to be the first time we've had him here at the East Tennessee Fishing Show. Not the first time for you, Brian. But the first time for you, Greg, um, and you're going to be sharing some kayak stuff with our with our great uh, vendors and, and visitors here at the East Tennessee Fishing Show uh, Seminar. Always a popular topic at the show, and uh, you're going to be bringing your flair to that. Um, you do fish um, all around the country, kayak fishing. You've got a pretty accomplished record of of uh, current winds and that's something i'd like to talk a little bit about tonight because i don't understand a lot of it how it actually works or format things like that but i'm sure you'll be able to explain that and also talk a little bit about what you're going to do um uh, during your your programs but um brian what's uh you know it's been probably seven or eight months since so we've had a chance to talk uh since the alabama fishing show what's been going on in your world oh uh, a lot <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, you know, here at MMA, we've been we've been wide open. Uh, you know, stand by. <laughs> It looks like my dog, too. I don't know where Brian went, but his dog's right there. <laughs> this is why I record these things, because the magic of editing, I could just edit stuff. Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. It's all right. The dogs, they, they were good, and then they started fighting up underneath my feet as soon as you asked me a question. Of course. <laughs> I'm, I'm recording this so I can edit all this stuff, Brian. Okay. So so you left off. Uh, yeah, you guys were wide open at MMA. Uh, yeah, here at MMA, we've been wide open. Um, trying to do a couple little changes, little small changes on some rods. You know, our first year out um, – we had some, you know, some uh, some customers that said this or that about certain little things on the rods that they would like to have modified. And we took the opportunity to listen to those people and we've modified those things on our product uh, to help, uh, you know, satisfy those people. And it was just minor things. It was, you know, uh, a, a label change. Uh or, you know, just a, a finish on the rod or the handle being a little longer or a little shorter, things like that. So we've worked yeah. on that in the off season. Uh, we've got that all straightened out and ready to go. We've added some models. Um, we've beefed up our pro staff a little bit uh, along with our staff. And we've just uh, been ramping up to get uh, up to the shows and uh, and show what we got this year. That's awesome. And, and that's such a good thing, you know, for a company to listen to their customers, too. And, you know, it may not be something that, that you would think is significant, but if it's something that a customer thinks that, you know, more than likely one person thinks of it, another one does, too. Right. And, that, you know, we're, we're fishermen ourselves, and uh, we don't want to just sell any kind of product. We want to sell products that people will use. And if there's a problem with something, we want to know it. And, and I think we've pretty well got it dialed in now. But uh, like I said, those slight modifications, we did those. We've got a new look with a new label. Um, we've added some models. They're all great. Uh, they're all 30 some odd models will be at the shows. Uh, you know, Greg has helped us tremendously with some of the rod uh, 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 descriptions and, and modifying those rods to fit some kayak angler, uh, kayak angler stuff. So, yeah. Um, you know, everything's just been really busy and we're just getting ready to sell some rods and fish this year. So, yeah. um, you know, it's funny you said that cause I was thinking about that too, you know, thinking about, you know, talking with Greg and what he's going to be covering at the show and, you know, and I don't kayak fish. I, I think I've got, I've got two, I've got one for me and one for my wife. I've been in them like twice. The, the problem is I get in them and I can't get back out of them. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and try to get into uh, is a is a uh, is a chore as well sometimes. But um, do you, Greg? Do you have to cater? You know, because obviously at some time or another you fished out of a regular boat, standing up into a bass boat or a you know whatever, and um, now you're in a totally different position than you normally would be when you're fishing. Do you find that you had to cater? you know, casting techniques or lengths of rods or actions or things like that to your kayak fishing? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, and that's kind of what I'm going to talk about in my seminar, too. One of the many things when you're trying to get into kayak fishing or tournament fishing or whatever is um, you don't have the same amount of storage. You don't have the same amount of elbow room. Um, you're, you're closer to the water. Um, kayaking in itself kayak bass fishing has just grown significantly over the last few years and it's evolved and I mean my kayak I stand up on my kayak I have a bow mount trolling motor on my kayak I can spot lock um I stand the entire day um so even with that you're still closer to the water than you are at a bass boat so yeah so you will see a lot of um 
kayak anglers and scenarios for certain techniques like dirt baiting, they'll need a shorter rod, but they'll need a shorter handle because they got to be able to, for the, to make the cadence on a jerk bait without hitting the water and throwing themselves off. Um, and also with kayak fishing at the same time, you need, you can, you can't carry as many rods. So you got to find more rods that are multi-technique oriented. So, um, I was fortunate enough to, you know, work with Brian and Matt at MMA fishing and I, they have a, a bunch of shorter rods and I was able to take those rods and not only take them from the big, the bass boat realm and say, this is what we'd use. But I, I was able to say, Hey, this is perfect for this technique on in kayak fishing. And, um, and yeah, it's just been, it's been a lot of fun trying those rods out. It's definitely, a it's definitely a different world fishing from a kayak. I'll tell you that. I have uh, my my extent is is a little five and a half foot ultralight spinning rod trying to catch some bluegills off the thing, um, you know. <laughs> so that's uh, I, I I haven't I think I caught a couple little small mobs. We usually take them to the rivers, you know. We go camp and stuff like that, and you know go float around a little bit, and you know I I just haven't delved into the, you know, kind of what you do. Obviously, you know, having you know equipment on your, well, on your kayak but um, well aside from tournament fishing you you know one of the benefits of the kayak is like down here in florida we can go a lot of places that the big boats can't go and there's some giants that live there and untapped water um just for fun fishing you know so um kayak fishing definitely has its pros and its cons and that's definitely one of the pros is going to some uncharted waters for sure yeah um, I'd be a little hesitant to want to maybe want to kayak fish in Florida. Um, I mean, there's stuff yeah, all around down there and slithers. And uh, what's the craziest thing that you've seen? Uh, I had an alligator come up and bite my paddle while I was paddling during a tournament. Yeah. And uh, I must have just gone over its nest or something. And it just, I couldn't paddle. It was very subtle and looked back and all I saw was teeth and shook it off and took a couple minutes to process what happened. Um, so obviously you got the gators, but for the most part, other than the little ones, they don't bother you. Um, and if they're there, they'll let you know. Um, the weather is always a big thing down here. Um, we had a couple guys last year on headwaters get tossed around. We had some, um, some, I guess they're called water spouts or whatever you would call like the, the big gusts on the water a couple guys got tossed around lost some equipment um but other than that it's not that bad it's not what you think you know um just be careful where you're walking in the water with your kayak for sure i think i'd be more worried about a snake and i know i'm really not a snake fan i mean i've, I've been around enough alligators it really don't bother you but um few and far between it's the fire ants when you're when you're walking around on the bank you got to look out for Oh, yeah. But the snakes really are few and far between, right. unless you're more down in like the Everglades. I'm not down there, so. Yeah, the 30 foot python coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They exist. Yeah. Um, um, so for, for a novice who's never, I've never been to a kayak tournament. I've, I've not. Um, what is obviously, can you, I guess my first question, can you put in, let's say, okay, You've got one at Okeechobee. Okeechobee is a pretty big yep. place. Can you go yep. put in and at different landings around the lake? Yeah, so 99% of the time um, when you fish a lake with multiple public boat launches, all those boat launches are in fair play. Um, but what we will do is we'll have a primary home base location where we'll do the award ceremony afterwards. Right. So. Um, I am running a, a kayak trail down here this year for Florida Bass Nation kayak series. I'm running the South Division and MMA fishing was nice enough to be a sponsor for that. Um, and we are fishing in tournament Okeechobee, the whole lake's in play, any public launch is fair play, but um, home base is gonna be at a tackle shop on the north side of the lake. So you may have some guys that gotta make an hour and a half run once they get off the water, just to get to where the award ceremony is. Um, so they need some, some tournaments, they will. 
they got it's it's lines out at a certain time. So for kayak fishing, we use um we use an app called Turny X, and um with the app, it's all GPS um tagged and everything like that. So what we'll do is we'll run a tournament through there, and obviously kayak fishing we can't wave fish in, so it's by inches. So we have a measuring board and an identifier for each tournament. And then what happens is when you go to the tournament, you check in on the app, it GPS tells you where you are, you catch a fish, you take the picture of the fish on the board with the identifier, it time stamps and gives the GPS location where you took the picture of the fish and when, and you submit it to the app. And the judges can see exactly where you were on the lake at the time you caught the fish. Um, so it, it lines out at a certain time. Um, Final photo submissions are usually we give an extra like half hour, 45 minutes because some lakes don't have good cell phone service. So they may have to go to a spot where there's a little bit more better service. Like we have a few lakes here that are just black holes, like there's just no service. So a lot of guys have to go out to the main road at the end of the tournament and submit the their fish photos. But it'll still tag when they took the photo where they were. So then now you're off the off of the lake, final submissions are done. Well, the award ceremony is usually like an hour after final submission. So it gives them time to get off on load and get to where they got to be if they decide to go. Um, and that's kind of how that runs on the bigger lakes. Most lakes down here, the smaller ones, we only have like one or two boat launches. Yeah. Very cool. And um, so before I go back to Brian here, what um, – uh, to give some people a little bit of context on your seminars that may want to come because it's going to be a popular one. And, and I am still working on the schedule. I should have it um, done in the next couple of days. So um, everybody that's watching me is looking for that on social media and on the East Tennessee Fishing Show website. Um, but what um, what are people going to want to know before they come see one of your seminars? So it's very a broad, it's going to be a really broad set of topics. It could be something ranging from somebody who's looking to kayak fish for the first time as a weekend warrior, as I like to call it, where they're going out fishing for fun on their time off to your tournament angler looking to pick up some tips and trip tricks on, you know, storage and stuff. And so like with anything in life, you know, you kind of see how everybody else does things. You take it in and you find your own way to do things. So over the years, kayak fishing, you know, you kind of you, you kind of evolve with how you store things and um, you work smarter, not harder. So with me, for example, one of the things I'll get into is always get waterproof boxes for all of your baits. Yeah. It's a few extra bucks more. You're out there in the rain. It pours. Everything's protected. It's only a couple extra bucks. So. Oh, but then it comes down to, okay, well, what boxes do I use where I can have more boxes on the kayak? So then it comes down to, okay, we got to look at different sizes, whether it's a 3,600 or a 3,700 box. So it really, you really got to play with everything and find what works for you. And so that's kind of, kind of one of the very many things that I can talk about in there. It's not going to, it's not going to be about how to be a winning tournament angler. Like that's not what the seminar is about. It's going to be kind of like everything kayak bass fishing 101 so that this way, hopefully somebody takes at least one thing away from it. Yeah. And um, I like I said, it'll be a very, and yeah, I mean, you may get a group of people in there who tournament fish all over the place, but they may pick up, Oh, Hey, that's, that's a pretty good way to store stuff so I can carry more stuff on the kayak right. or, you know, maybe that's a good re that's a good, good rod to choose where I can get multiple techniques out of it. So it kind of limits, if I can only bring eight or nine rods on my kayak, I may need one rod that I can do a few things with. So, um, yeah, it's really going to be kind of catered to what the, the audience wants and what they're looking to get out of it. Yeah. Very cool. And, uh, and Brian, speaking of that, um, you know, if you only had one rod or a couple of the rods to, to choose from, I get that question quite a bit, you know, for maybe guys that are just getting into, into fishing for the first time and maybe hadn't fished in a while and they're getting back into it and they're checking out stuff that's new. Um, and they say, well, you know, I can probably get one or two, maybe three outfits, you know, maybe a, 
I need a spinning rod, but I need a couple of bait casters too. Um, what's your advice for people like that? And, and, uh, and, and what fishing rods from MMA fit into that category? Yeah, so what I would do is I would go middle of the road. You know, I would do uh, a medium heavy action on a bait caster. I would do uh, a, a medium length. I would do like a 7-3. Um, you can do multiple techniques with a seven, three medium heavy. Um, then I would also, I would go with a medium spinning rod of some, some kind. Um, but with that, we have a few models coming out, uh, at this show at, at the East Tennessee show that, uh, they're not, they're not ultra light rods. They're not spinning rods and they're not medium heavies, but they're going to be really cool. And there's going to be a lot of people that like them. Um, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but we, we have some rods that are, uh, that are sought for right now. Uh, people are looking for these rods and not everybody's doing them. So we're excited about that. We're just excited to get to come back to East Tennessee and, uh, you know, see everybody and show everybody what we have new. Um, and, uh, we also have the, the rods that we did have. I have calls every day. Hey, when can I get this rod? Can I get that rod? Uh, I mean, it, it's just been really good, and uh, you guys have helped us a lot, and we re really appreciate that. We're just excited to get back up there and do it again this year. Awesome. Can't wait to have you both. And uh, yes, if people want to come find you, the one of you, I know, Greg, you've got a guide service. And, uh, Brian, give out your uh, social media. It's pretty easy to find you guys, um, yes, MMA sir. Fishing. Yes, sir. And that's, uh, I believe, on Facebook, too. Just type in MMA Fishing. Yes, sir. We have we have Instagram. We have uh, Facebook. We have TikTok. We have a website, MMAFishing.com. Our guide service is listed on there. Greg has his Bass Shackers uh, thing, and he has a, a guide service as well down in Florida. Um, but this year is going to be a, a kind of a breakout year for us. We uh, I have went full-time into MMA and guiding, so... Uh, it's full steam ahead now. Um, Matt and I and Greg, uh, along with a couple other guys that help us, uh, we're going to be hard at it. So uh, you'll start seeing us a lot more places and seeing our name everywhere. So awesome. uh, like like I said, we appreciate you guys at East Tennessee, and we're anxious to get there and get set up. And uh, we uh, I don't know about the coffee, but we'll have donuts for everybody in the morning. So, <laughs> uh, so we, we look forward to that as well. That sounds great. Can't wait to see both of you guys and, and can't wait to meet you, Greg. I've met Brian a bunch of times, but getting uh, really looking forward to meeting you as well. Sounds good. All right. And we are out of time here for another uh, outdoor showcase episode. Um, be sure to check us out on Amazon and Roku and YouTube and then obviously here on social media tons of places to go find the outdoor showcase watch all the past episodes and see every new show every thursday night um, all the way through the east tennessee fishing show and the alabama fishing show coming up here in march and we will see you all next week